Hey crew, this is Wander Sailing episode 7. In this episode, we make our own mainsail and complete a Black Dragon refit before heading offshore. No so wind, no so wind machine! <laughs> oh la la! Mamma mia! I never thought in my life I would be excited about a sign machine. <laughs> you have to bend it. It's heavy? Yeah. Yeah. So we ordered an industrial strength sewing machine from Sailrite, along with our sail making kits in order to make a new mainsail and a new jib. The kit came with all the Dacron and Sunbrella fabric, thread, needles, basting tape, hardware, instructions, and everything in between. We decided to make our sail sails ourselves for a number of reasons. One, we have way more time, sweat, and tears than money and this would save our cruising kitty dollars for more margaritas and tacos when we got to Mexico. Two, we like the idea of do-it-yourself. There is always a good amount of learning that helps you down the line. Three, we wanted to get intimate with our sails so that if they were to tear or break later, we would know how to fix them. Four, well, if you couldn't tell already, we are a little on the crazy side. Like who makes their own sails? Apparently not many people, and for very good reason. hard we went to get some work done. Little did we know that liveaboards weren't allowed, which left us scrambling for where to sleep for a while. Thankfully Flo let us crash on his couch for a night, and our dearest friend Clayton took us in for a lengthy period of time. Eric and his mom started working on the mainsail ASAP, working night and day in the marina common room. They worked so late sometimes that the security guard would keep them company, haha. <laughs> he was quite the character. He loves his machine. He says it's a man water sewing machine. Well, it's a fairy tale that that shoemaker that passed out and then wakes up and there's the most beautiful shoes he ever saw. It turned out to be elves that were doing it in the middle of the night. We quickly learned that making sales on the floor was ergonomically just not okay. So we ended up sneaking into my workplace boardroom after everyone cleared out for the night, including most weekends. So you know how I said earlier that not many people make their own sales for good reason? Well, here are just some that come to mind. 1. Proper space. Sales are big and you need lots of room to lay down panels and sew them together. The surface needs to be clean or your sales will dirty quickly and easy to move the fabric on. 2. It's really not as easy as it looks. Sailrite does a great job providing video tutorials and detailed how-to manuals, but the work is extremely detail-oriented. Patience and a steady hand is key, especially when your sewing machine skips a stitch, breaks a needle, or what other failure takes place. There is a lot of troubleshooting and you're just gonna have to figure it out. Three, time. The mainsail took us weeks to complete. Obviously, we had some learning curves to overcome, but all in all to us, it was beneficial to sew our mainsail for many reasons that I previously listed. We just don't want to mislead anyone into thinking it's easy, because it's not. And if you're not up to it, just go to a sailmaker. We have mad respect for their work. I like this. Yeah, don't it? Yeah, it's cute. Just for a quick getaway one weekend. So it was my 29th birthday weekend, which was the perfect excuse to take a break from all of the sailing projects. We went on a little road trip down to Washington for the Skagit Valley Tulip Festival, followed by some brews in Leavenworth. Cheers to the last year of my 20s. After this nice weekend getaway, it was now time to get back to work. Since we were planning to drop the keel, we had to pull the mast out. And while we were on the hard, we decided to do some maintenance on the bottom, since there was uh, Serious amount of blisters. There you go. Logo. Logo. That was 
was a pocket of water inside. Yeah. What did you think about this kill work? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's strange, but it's The chain plates was also on the to-do list. Since the mass was out, it was the perfect timing to be able to examine them. So I had to drill some of the core from the deck and after that pour some of my epoxy in the hole to be able to seal the core. And after that having to re-drill the chain plates. It took us about a couple weeks to scrape about a decade or two worth of paint. So we ended up dropping the rudder to inspect the rudder stock. We also dropped the keel, and good thing we did because there was uh, some rust spots and some serious fiberglass lamination on there. So we had to re-glass about three-quarter inch. And we also opened most of the blisters. Hey, I, you do not have my consent. And I had to call a tow truck to move it. No means yes. So almost week five at the boat yard. Um, so I work on the blisters yesterday. We got about 40% uh, done. About the fillings and everything. So, getting close. Uh, most of the big job is actually to sand inside and getting scuffs to make sure the epoxy uh, sticks. And this weekend we had about 10 people coming to help and uh, clean up the blisters and um, apply some kind of uh, sealer barrier coat so they don't there's no more blisters so you can see all a bit of uh, the sealant anyway hopefully we'll finish today and this is the setup so we just have to gear up and we're ready to go Well, we had a true hole here and uh, it was too small for the engine so it was always overheating. Um, so we thought we'd give, uh, I think it was a half inch, so we upgrade to a one inch. Uh, those are flush mounts, so what we had to do uh, was recommended that we um, fill it up and we'll just have to sand it, put it flush, and we'll re-drill it for the size that we need. And uh, it will be a mushroom style, so the one that kind of go over, so it's just a lot simpler and, you know, for the speed difference, I, I think we don't really care, we're lazy uh, cruisers. Anyway, so anyway, so we'll send that up, redrill uh, for the right size, upgrade the um, the true hole, the ball valve, and filters. So hopefully, it won't eat, overeat anymore. Um, and yeah, see how it goes. Welcome to my lab. So we had a little bit of fiberglass to do. There was some crack here in the fiberglass. So we had to re-glass that. That's the fiberglass. It'll be a little bit of cleanup tomorrow. But... It's not too bad. 
In order to reinforce the keel, we decided to make some massive brackets for the keel boats. Relaying the keel was quite an operation. After being at the boatyard for 7 to 8 weeks working there every day, 14 to 16 hour days, I got to know the employees quite well, and we got quite lucky to have them give us a hand to realign the keel. Working at Dairy Queen before. Yeah. And whipping it. <laughs> I got a surprise for you. <laughs> that was a plug where they filled the foam and I think I don't know, it wasn't done properly so they were soaking water so just sealed it and hopefully it won't happen again. Cleaned up some really minor blister before it get worse so Groovy yeah. baby. Go for it. Hope it's working. Beautiful. Forget how good it feels when you rip that thing. Yes. After all that hard work, look at that. <laughs> Thing of beauty. And you did all this in what, like three hours? Five. <laughs> <laughs> Five weeks? See if we can go all the way out without breaking that thing. I think that's a good luck sign when you're doing it <laughs> without breaking it. Let's hear that. Uh, that I did yesterday would be kind of breaking, but it seems like it's... No, it's beautiful. Perfect. There you go. Perfect. You do do this for a living, right? No. <laughs> Look at that. Beautiful job, Eric. Hey, thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> what are we doing right now, Caroline? We're getting ready to go in the water. <laughs> Splash, we're back in the water and life was good again after a solid weeks of boat work hell. On the next episode of Wonder Sailing, we take a road trip into the Northwest Territories bush in hopes of making money to fund all of these expensive projects. We attempt to harvest morel mushrooms, all before untying the lines and saying goodbye to Vancouver. Did you like this episode? Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to follow along the adventure. You can also help us keep afloat and fuel the dream by becoming a patron. Patrons get exclusive VIP access, rewards, wander sailing shop discounts, and more. Check out patreon.com slash wander sailing. XOXO, Eric, Caroline, and Kona.